the new strategy is is emblematic of what's gone on in the past. And as you've mentioned, the United States, uh, when it can, gets UN or international acquiescence for what is essentially a U.S. military operation. But if that uh, support is lacking, as it was in Iraq or as it was uh, in the Libya campaign, uh, the United States uh, just does it anyway. Uh, certainly, you can see that in Syria. So I think what we have is a, is a situation, if you step back, the United States violates international law routinely. Uh, it says always that it's the great upholder of international law. But I think what, when you look at this new report, what's most outstanding is that compared to 2011, it's a quadrennial report where Russia was barely mentioned. Now the United States government postulates, one, that Russia is a, is a major uh, adversary, that there's a possibility of a major interstate war with a major power, meaning Russia. And three, the United States is losing its supremacy in military technology, signaling, as it did in the 1950s, a new arms race. And I think that's what this show, this uh, report portends. I don't think there is a loss of advantage. I think that this is usually a political signal largely for domestic public consumption in America. You know, Americans are being told that there's no money for hospitals and schools and many, many other vitally needed social programs. But suddenly we will have a clarion call that the United States must catch up. It must not let its adversaries, Russia or China, become superior to America. This is precisely what triggered the advanced arms race in the 1950s. So I think the language is political. It shows the United States is, the, is a defensive party. It's a possible victim of aggression. It must not allow itself to become uh, the victims of aggression, and it can only deter it by adding more and more and more money to the arms uh, budget. So I think it signals that. But also we see a new generation of nuclear weapons being built and a new deployment strategy of military forces, especially in the Arctic. And that is to challenge Russia and to a lesser degree China. And I think this study re uh, shows that that's where this is really moving. The United States realizes that its dream of a unipolar world, uh, the dream that started to become an operational doctrine for the United States following the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, that that dream has turned into an impossible, uh, an impossible goal. That in fact Russia has ba is back on its feet. It's asserting its own interests. China is growing. It's trying to grow peacefully and rise peacefully and become a medium-range power. But the United States sees that Russia and China and Iran and other countries in the world, including South Africa and Brazil and India, are unwilling to be just victims of U.S. hegemony, that they're asserting their own national interests. And so I think the United States sees that now as a threat to its fantasy of unipolar domination following the collapse of the USSR. In fact, if you look at what the United States is doing, not what it says in this, in this sort of carefully worded military doctrine, the pivot towards Asia is a pivot of containment. The new, uh, the new military strategy, which is to take all of the non-Chinese republics and nations of the Asia Pacific region and forge them into a US-led military alliance can't be perceived in China as anything but a grave threat to China's uh, national interests in China's own backyard, in its own territory, in the East China Sea and South China Sea, and right up to the Chinese border. So uh, uh, deeds here say a great deal more than words. And so I think it's carefully worded, but in, clearly the Chinese know that the pivot towards Asia is a pivot against China and not with China.